So this is a fridge for the camper here. It came with this, I believe. And I was told it doesn't work, so we're totally going to investigate this. Let's see if I can find some model information for you playing along at home. Manufactured for the Dometic Corp, Elhar, Indiana, USA, for Domestic Distribution, Inc., Cambridge, Ontario. It draws one and a half amps at 120 volts. This unit is not capable of 12 volts. It also runs on gas. R717. I think this is an ammonia fridge, if I remember correctly. I'm not going to explain how this works because I might get it wrong, but well, I guess I'll explain what I know. An absorption refrigeration system actually works pretty simple in principle. It's a little more complicated pump plumbing wise, but this is basically how one works. First the ammonia is heated by gas or electricity where it rises to a series of fins on top of the unit. These fins reject the heat out of the gas and condense the ammonia back into a liquid state. After the condenser, this large tube of liquid ammonia slants upward where a smaller tube comes off. The large tube then continues downward and goes into the evaporator coils. The smaller tube is actually a hydrogen bypass tube, so this allows the hydrogen gas to come off and recirculate back into the refrigeration loop near the absorber coils. While the liquid ammonia flows through the evaporator coils, it absorbs the heat from inside the refrigerator. This absorption of heat causes the ammonia to evaporate back into a gas. After the ammonia exits the evaporator coils, it then flows back down into the leveling chamber. And the leveling chamber is essentially a place where the ammonia solution is stored to be boiled again and start the refrigeration cycle over. That leaves us with this curled up mess on the back side of the refrigerator here. This is the absorber coil set. And what this does is this takes the hydrogen bypass tube and the uh, water ammonia solution and it separates it out from the hydrogen. And it leaves the hydrogen kind of free floating in the hydrogen bypass tube and lets the ammonia solution itself fall back down into the level. It has to be perfectly level. So whenever you see an RV or a camper and they got the the wheel chocks and they got it spaced and leveled. The uh, only real reason why it has to be that precision leveled is because of the fridge. So I don't know if it's level sitting here on the table. I guess I should grab a level and find out. But uh, what I'm going to do, because he tried an electric, he hasn't tried the gas. I'm assuming at this point that it would probably work on gas. I don't have any gas to test it with though. So I'm going to check these switch contacts and I'm going to ohm out the heating element and make sure that it's not open circuit and go from there. Okay, so I've identified the problem. The thermostat is actually good. The problem lies here in this main power switch, which I thought would be okay because, you know, mechanically there isn't much to it. But I was wrong. So as you can see, there's continuity here. The switch is in AC mode, by the way. And I got nothing here on the neutral. We got hot though. We don't got neutral. So I'm gonna have to take it apart, I guess, and see what's going on. All right, after a good and thorough switch cleaning. Excellent. And of course, if I move these to this one. We're good there. Now, before I try and power it up, I'm just gonna unplug these and make sure that the contacts don't look as crappy as these do. These have just been sitting open, so they're a little bit oxidized. I just want to make sure no oxidation has taken place in there. And then we'll give it a shot. All right, I've leveled this up. As close as I'm really going to get it, which is good. It's 
perfect. Okay. So I'm gonna plug in AC power, I'm gonna put you down. Smoke test. All right, we're not on fire yet. Let me go ahead and turn the power on. Oh yeah, I don't know where the thermostat's set at. Okay, all the way to the right is maximum cooling. And I shouldn't have to do anything else other than turn it to AC. So, here we go. Exciting, huh? Now we wait. I could, I guess, intercept the hot and see what the current draw is, but these meters, this is just a cheesy generic meter, and I don't know, it's probably fine on 120 volts, but they really suck. <laughs> Yep, I can definitely feel the heating element working now. It's just getting started though. So, I'm gonna go do something else and we'll come back in about 30 minutes and see if it's working good.